Good morning, everyone. This is Pastor Lara will be with me again, the pastor in charge of Redeemed Christian Church of God, Seat of Mercy, and the visionary for Kingdom Jewels International. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his countenance to shine upon you and give you peace. Peace at home. Peace in your lives. Peace in the lives of everyone that matters to you. In the name of Jesus. It is time for our Bible study again. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Lord, we give you glory for another opportunity to study at your feet. We pray, Lord God Almighty, that you teach us your word and give us understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today, we are going to look at the book of Second Kings, chapter 6, from verse 1 to 6. Second Kings 6, 1 to 7. <laughs> Second Kings 6, 1 to 7. Today, I'm not going to read two versions of the Bible because of our time. There's a lot to uh, study in this particular Bible study, in this particular um, text. Our text is Second Kings 6, 1 to 7. And the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha, Behold, now, the place where we dwell with, with thee is too straight for us. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take hence every man a beam, and let us make us a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, go with thy servants. And he said, I will go. So he went with them, and when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. But as one was felling a beam, the axe, the axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place. And he cut down a stick and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. Therefore said he, Take it up to thee. And he put out his hand and took it. May the Lord bless his words in our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's quickly dwell into the word this morning. Like I said, we have a lot to learn from this uh, text we are reading today. This is about the sons of the prophets that were dwelling with Elisha. We'll say those are like his um, workers, his ministers, his assistants. They were dwelling with him. And they realized the place was too small for them. And um, they would have thought amongst themselves, let us go and build some place so we'll leave the master to be by himself. At least we know we are giving him space. But instead, they went to him and discussed with him and said, Master, you see that place we dwell together is small. They took the pain of going to tell him their plans. They didn't just jump and say, we are not children, we know what to do with ourselves. This place is too small. The master can see. That is looking at it from the point of the servants, I mean the sons of the prophet. As a leader, sometimes things you don't see your followers may see it. Prophet Elisha did not say, shut up. I am the prophet here. I am the leader here. I am the one to see when some place is too small. But instead, when they said this place is small, he agreed with them. Let us go and build another place. He didn't say this is where I want to stay. That, that is a leader, a good leader. 
who is not just adamant on my opinion, my idea all the time. Also, after they told him, the place was too small for us. They told him, we want to build another place. He told them to go. He allowed them to go. He said, okay, you can go. But the next thing that happened there is that they know that he was the custodian of the anointing of God amongst them. So they said, come with us. Don't let us go by ourselves. When you come with us, power will come with us. When we, you come with us, anointing will come with us. Some of us as um, followers forget that anybody that God has sent on an errand, it gives extra power. It gives extra anointing. I just want to divert from the Bible study and say, even amongst couples, the fact that the pastor is your husband or your wife does not make you disrespect the person. When you are home, your husband and wife, but at the church or when you are at, the person is in the place of office, if you don't see him as your, your pastor, you don't get that um, anointing that others are getting. Things people will be tapping freely will be difficult for you to tap. But he said, come with us. He did not resist. He said, I will go with you. How many mentors follow their mentees to go and shine? So when they got there, as they were cutting the beams, the trees they were supposed to cut to use to make a new abode, alas, there was a problem. Somebody's axe head fell inside the river. When problem arise in your life, who do you go to? Who do you go to? This guy had colleagues, colleagues there. He could have gone to his colleagues and they start saying, "Ah, what shall we do now? We don't want to bother the master." I don't want to bother my pastor. I don't want to bother Jesus. <laughs> I will hear people saying, ah, this is too small for Jesus. Let me do it myself. But the carrier of the anointing was amongst them. Just like when uh, there was a storm in the lives of the disciples. They had tried all they could. And re then remembered, we have the custodian of power with us. Then they went to Jesus. That was just like what happened here. They went to, he, the guy who had the accent went to the man of God, went to the custodian of power, went to the one the Lord has made the head. <clears throat> he could have said, how many people know how to swim here? Let us see if we can swim to the bottom of the river. But instead, he spoke to the man of God, the custodian of power that was with them. Therefore, because he acknowledged the power of God upon the servant of God that was their leader, the power of God worked for him. He believed in the prophet and was established. Now, again, I want to go further because I just want us to treat this thing once and for all. He, he had an issue. The issue is that that accent was not even his. What is the problem you have that you don't even know how to explain? It's a problem beyond your power. Who do you go to? When problem arise. That problem you think cannot be solved. 
Do you know there is nothing impossible with our God? He's the God of all flesh. There is nothing impossible with him. And also, because the man, when he was working, was diligent in what he was doing. He wasn't on the phone talking and talking when he was supposed to be listening to the man, uh, I mean, to be listening to the word of God or to be when he was working. Because if he was busy doing something else, gisting, do, playing around, he wouldn't have known where the axe head fell. But he was, he was careful enough to know where it was. When they asked him where they did for, he knew where because he was, when he was at work, he was diligent at his work. He was uh, concentrating on what he was doing. And then a miracle happened. We all know that uh, woods don't sink. And we know that axe, iron, don't um, float. I discover one thing there. The man of God, when he cut the wood, did not ask the son of the prophet to put it there. He used his anointed hand to do it. Some of us don't trust the men of God or women of God. God has put us under their authority enough to believe them. Do you know that a lot of times, it's not that even the men of God are the ones that do these things. It's God that supports those that he has sent on errand. That is why he could tell people, touch not my anointed, do my prophet no harm. When God has anointed somebody, he goes extra length to make their words not to come, to fall on the floor, on the ground rather. He said, where did you, where did it fall? The guy knew where it fell. The man of God caught the beam and did not send that guy to go and put it where he, he did, did it because it was the one that God has given that power. It was the one that God has given that authority. And another thing we have to know is that it is a good thing that the man of God was with them. When that thing happened, if Elisha was not there, that accident would have been lost forever. Because by the time they would go and look for him and bring him, the man would have lost the, the, the sense of where that thing fell. It is so good that Jesus Christ is in the life of every man. When problem comes, you know where to turn to. It is good that you belong to a household of faith. So that whatever happens, you have power in the house. You have brethren. You can join hands to pray together. Jesus must be in the boat of your life. If Elisha was not there, it would have been difficult to get the access. If Jesus is not in your, the boat of your life, who do you call? Who will you call when that problem of Allah's we borrowed it comes? Brethren. You need Jesus in your life. You need to be genuinely born again. Not being a churchgoer, but born again. A Christian that is living according to the will of the master. How close are you to the master? Problem comes. If we look at the book of Isaiah chapter 43, it says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, the river will not overshadow you. I'm reading verse 3. It says, when you pass through the uh, fire, the fire will not burn you, neither will the flame kindle upon you. Being with you is more important. Brethren, give your life to Jesus. Let him be the part of your life. And you will realize that when problems come, it will be there for you. I pray that God Almighty will be there for you in every situation of life. Every accident that has fallen in your life, I pray that the Lord Almighty will pull it up for you. Share this video to encourage some people. God bless you. Love you all. See you again. Bye.